So welcome to the composition workshop hosted by CMC and Alex today will be teaching us how to compose with MuseScore 3. So take it away. So yeah, if you're really interested in composing, then I highly suggest that you, that you use the software called MuseScore 3. It's a free software and it's really easy to use. Like that's what I use and it's really good to it's really good for composing. Um I don't know the exact number um for how many instruments there are, but there're like a lot of instruments like there're probably at least 200 maybe. I don't know, but some of the some instruments you've like never heard of. So anyway, uh there's like a lot of instruments and how to get started. It's really easy, so First, you have to download it, obviously, from like Google Chrome or Safari or whatever. But after you download it, you have to open up the application. And then obviously, you'd create a new project. And when you open a new project or when you create a new project, it's going to look a little bit intimidating because um, there are like a lot of elements and things that that are like available for you. But this shouldn't like intimidate you because um, you'll only use like maybe 40 to 50% of the tools, like maybe not even like 50, maybe like 33 to like 45. But yeah, all those elements, you, you really don't need them and it's really easy to use. So yeah, like I said, there are, there are a variety of tools. Like for example, um, you can include like dynamics, articulations, musical terms and yeah, basically the possibilities are like endless. Like as long as you can think of it, you can compose. <laughs> All right, so there are some considerations you can take in. Uh, so there is a playback option. So basically you compose this piece and you play it back. But when you play it back, it's not accurate because it's performed by a machine and if you go on YouTube, you can search up like machine performances and they don't sound that great. Like the the playback machine audio, it's only supposed to be like a bass for you. Like it's just supposed to give you a general idea. So if it doesn't sound good on the machine, then you shouldn't feel bad. You shouldn't feel bad. And that shouldn't stop you because um it's performed by a machine and it probably sounds great because the machine it's lacking human emotions and musicality and such. So yeah, the sound it's supposed to be basically a rough idea and uh oh. you should take into account the music. Okay, sorry. When you when you uh when you compose, you have to make sure that the music uh you're composing is actually playable if you want um for example, people to perform it. Like what Andy was saying to me the other day, you can have like your, um, you, you can ask your youth orchestra, like MCYO or something. You can ask Mr. Sans if you'd like to perform your piece or something, but you have to make sure that it's playable. And also if you're going to ask Mr. Sans if, if he could like play your piece, you also have to like, um, write parts for all the instruments because MCYO, it's a full orchestra. So you have to make sure you include all the instruments like yeah <laughs> yeah so the idea is um you guys uh you can pull up any software you prefer but i mean this was from for MuseScore, um and compose like a few lines or just even a simple melody and then after they will be you can feel free to submit it and we will play or perform it and we will vote on um all the compositions so yeah so in front of you that's obviously the score and the score it basically shows like all the parts um yeah that looks really impressive andy good job <laughs> rondo lego uh, scarsando so anyway um to your left those are like all those are like the um elements you can do like yeah for example you have your key signature your time signature um you also have like dynamics, articulations. Some of them you're not gonna use. Like for example, um, let's see. I don't think I I don't think I really use note heads. Yeah, I don't really use note heads. 
but yeah like what i was saying you don't really use all these elements but yeah those are like your essential ones yeah and then obviously um if you look at the top you have like the different notes that you can perform in like, andy can you like just create a note or something all right okay so um i'll create like um just like create a new uh, yeah yeah there you go and then um uh, so it's going to be a uh, five for a quarter note, uh, six for a half note, uh, seven for a whole note and so on. Um, uh, if you press five and then you um, click anywhere on the staff, you see this, um, this light blue note pop up and you click anywhere on the staff, it's going to input a note. Wow. And then, <laughs> that is cool. And okay. can, like uh, change the, um, change the duration. You can also use your uh, the A B C D E F G keys to do the same thing. Um, so um, and um, let's add in a dynamic here. We can add in forte. Um, you double click here to add the dynamic, and um, we can like add a crescendo and a diminuendo, and then you can like double click to like move it around and everything. And um, you can and Andy, can you quickly uh, speak about like how did you put in those dynamics? Were there any keyboard shortcuts or hotkeys? Oh, no, th there's none in MuseScore. Yeah. Like you have to like manually go and click on every dynamic. Oh, so how did you get the crescendo and decrescendo? Oh, um, oh, crescendo. Um, it's uh, it's the uh, less than sign for a crescendo, which is shift comma, and then um, shift period for the decrescendo. Oh, like like that. Um, less than or greater than signs. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So do you want to compose like a tiny melody to show everyone? All right, then uh, I'll do this on the spot. Um. <laughs> he can just improvise like that. I don't know if you guys saw in the chat, but fun fact, um, I believe Andy was the state winner for um, Maryland in composition last year. So very impressive. I, I, I'm still like getting used to like the note shortcuts on like this and like Sibelius, which is what I use now. They're like so much different. Oh, like, wow. Yeah, and if you're in AP Music Theory, I, am, I believe Mr. Alal asks you to create in Sibelius. Um, yeah. And then you can put like a tempo marking. Um, uh, you can put tempo markings. In tempos, too. yeah. Let's yeah. make it fast. You can type in like uh, Allegro. Um, Two hundred. <laughs> hundred. Um, sure. Give it a fancy title as well. Um. Okay, let's just listen to this. I think it's too fast for our he for us to hear. All right, so um, let's make it slower then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Make it 144. Oh, I love that tempo. Still too fast. Uh, okay, actually, yeah. yeah. 132. 132. Yeah. Well, let, me, let me just make it 80 or something to like. So you can always play around with it. Uh, so yeah, this is everything. This is the end of our composition workshop was by uh, Church of Musicians. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comment section. Please like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.